Yep, you read that title correctly. All RTX cards are now getting a massive upgrade thanks to DLSS 4. Now, I've seen quite a lot of chatter online where people thought that DLSS 4 was exclusive to the 50 series cards. And while the new multi-frame generation technology is exclusive to 50 series, the upgrades to DLSS super resolution, frame generation, ray reconstruction and DLAA are backwards compatible, which is huge. So today I wanted to take a look at the differences in quality between these features in DLSS 3 and DLSS 4. I'm going to show you how to switch between the two versions and I'm also curious to see if there's any performance impact going on here. So let's dive in. All right, folks, we're here in Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. I'm on my 5800X3D 4080 Super with 64 gigs of RAM DDR4 CL18. 3600 um, so we're here in 4k in the very high preset running taa so no dlss upscaling assistance and as you can see we could probably do with some because we're barely getting 50 fps here and the gpu's maxed out the cpu is just having a party sat there at 20 30 percent chilling out um, so pay attention to stuff like the detailing on Ratchet's fur, particularly on his ears. There's also all the characters hopping around. There's lots of cool lighting going on. So there's a lot going on in this scene. So we're going to turn on DLSS 3 to start with and see what that gets us in terms of performance uplift. And then we'll compare and contrast to the same uh, DLSS settings in DLSS 4. See if we get any better visuals and also if we have any kind of performance impact because you know they're claiming all these visual improvements but i'm wondering does that come at a cost so let's uh let's go into dlss 3 first of all and see what we get good so now we've got dlss 3 quality mode enabled you can see we're now getting more like 77 fps which is a great improvement nice to be over that 60 fps mark um, especially in a game like this so visually, I'm just kind of looking at the fur on Ratchet's ears. I'm looking at the detail on Clank there and you know, looking at the leather on Ratchet's boots. Everything's looking pretty good, I've got to say. like I think DLSS quality, even DLSS 3 in quality, was always a nice place to be in 4K. It's one of those where you could set it on and for the most part, unless you're going to turn into like a pixel peeper and, you know, just sit there obsessing over every single last pixel on your screen rather than actually playing and enjoying the game. Um, I think, you know, for most people, most of the time, in most instances, quality in DLSS 3 on 4K is a really nice place to be. Now, in 1440p, it uh, can be a little bit of a different story, but in 4K, I think this is a nice place to be. So let's go now to performance, and we'll see if we uh, get any kind of performance degradation, or sorry, visual degradation, and uh, see what performance increase we get. All right, goody, we're now into DLSS 3 performance mode and we are flirting with 100 FPS, which is really nice. However, I can immediately tell the visual quality has taken a bit of a nosedive. Um, I don't know whether you're going to be able to see it because obviously my PC is going to encode this. So that's going to drop some kind of detail out of it. It's then going to get uploaded to YouTube, which again is going to drop some detail out of it. So whether you're able to see what I'm seeing or not, I don't know. I suspect not, but I can tell immediately kind of... Um, clank's mouth there where like the two bits of metal uh kind of join it looks rather jagged compared to what we had on quality and daa or, uh, not daa taa sorry um also when you look out into the distance uh where you got is it captain quark i think he's called uh in the distance you can kind of see some like little lamp posts there on the platforms and the building behind it's just not as crisp not as crisp by any stretch but we're getting good performance numbers so it'd be like if we could get this level of performance <laughs> in performance but also have better image quality well that would be a pretty good win and i'm curious to see whether dlss 4 can get us that okay so let's enable dlss 4 and to do so we need to go into the graphic settings find your game so i've got ratchet and clank rift apart come all the way down to driver settings and we want to find dlss override models preset and at the moment you can see it's used the 3d application settings so basically let the game do what it wants to do and given that ratchet and clank comes with dlss 3 when we were testing a moment ago we were testing with dlss 3 click into this however and you can come down and then rather than use the 3d application setting you can select latest this is going to get us to use dlss 4 if we click back in you can see for the super resolution setting it's now defaulted to using the latest super resolution technology and that is of course what comes with DLSS 4 and the new transformer based AI models so hopefully we can see some increase to visual quality so let's get back into the game and see if it's made a difference to the visuals and also to our FPS numbers. Okay before we dive into the game I just want to draw your attention to the bottom left of the screen this is a uh, piece of data that gets overlaid because I added a registry key 
into um, regedit. And so what that does, it shows you exactly what version of DLSS you're running. You can see now we're using uh, render preset K and the DLSS version is, uh, was that 3.10.2.1? So that's basically we're on the latest version. So it's important that we know we're on the version we think we're on. Um, weirdly, when you get into the game, it kind of blurs over it, so you can't quite see it, but I thought I'd mention it. All right, so we're back in Ratchet and & Clank, and we're running DLSS 4 in quality mode, and I think it's fair to say that visually, you know, it looks really, really nice. There's no question about that. I'm struggling to tell much of a difference between what we had with TAA and, of course, now DLSS 4 in quality mode. I think it's fair to say, though, our FPS has taken a bit of a hit. We were at more like 77 FPS before. We're now down sort of into the low 70s. You can see the real time 70, 71, 72, average of 71. So obviously this visual improvement has come at a price in terms of our FPS numbers. My question is, is that with this new visual improvement with DLSS 4, does that now put performance back on the cards as a viable option? Because I think beforehand, the, the visual degradation was quite apparent when you go to performance. So can we now maybe use it and get the benefits of all the extra frames while not sacrificing image quality too much? So let's find out. All right, so we're back in uh, performance mode now with DLSS 4. And again, not quite as high as we were seeing with DLSS 3. What were we seeing? More like 99, 98, 100 FPS. We're now sort of low 90s, really. But the visual quality, I would say, is really quite nice, actually. A, a, a vast improvement over DLSS 3, that's for sure. The... Uh, the jagged edges that I saw around kind of uh, Clank's mouth there on the back of Ratchet, like where the sort of metal you know represents his mouth, uh, that was quite jaggedy on DLSS 3. And especially as you look out into the distance, I noticed things were not quite as nice as they could be. There's a lot of jagged edges going on, a lot of kind of you know, a bit of jitteriness perhaps on some sharp edges. But this looks really nice. I mean, let's just go for a little wander around here. I mean, I could quite happily play this, I think. I really think I could play this. But yeah, being back here in DLSS 3 in performance mode, I think it's quite clear that the visual quality, um, especially you get a lot more jagged edges, things like that. It just doesn't look as, as, as sharp as uh, you get in DLSS 3 quality mode. But DLSS 4 performance mode, now that to me looks really good. I'm just going to quickly stop here in DLSS 3 performance mode and we're going to cut to DLSS 4 performance mode and hopefully you can see the difference and see if I can as well. All right, we're back with DLSS 4 in performance mode and immediately I can see the visual quality differences. This is looking really, really nice. Now, I couldn't tell a huge amount of difference between quality to quality um, in DLSS 4 to 3. Um, the thing is, I always find that quality, even with DLSS 3, didn't look that bad compared to native. Um, it was when you went down to performance to try and get those extra frames that unfortunately you would get the uh, the visual suffering as well. Now, I'm sure if we were to go crazy and start pixel peeping, we're obviously going to be able to tell differences between performance and quality, even in DLSS 4. But my point is, is that my eyes looking at my screen right now, this is really nice. Like there's nothing wrong with this image. I'm really struggling to find fault with it. And we're getting 100 FPS at the same time. So we're getting 100 FPS experience in 4K with a great visual experience. That is a massive, massive win. I mean, honestly, I'm kind of shocked that NVIDIA allowed this kind of uh, transformer based AI model stuff to be backwards compatible. I mean, this could have been, been a reason alone to upgrade to 50 series. But the fact that we're all getting it now on our 20, 30 and 40 series cards is awesome. Okay, so we're playing Cyberpunk now in 1440p. I'm curious to see what happens at 1440p. Obviously, we had a good result in Ratchet and Clank at 4K, uh, allowing us to use DLSS for performance mode at 4K with really, I would say, no visual degradation much whatsoever. I would liken it to DLSS 3 quality mode. However, 1440p has always been a bit different for me with DLSS. I've always said, really, you don't want to go much lower than quality as things can start to look a bit iffy quite quickly. So we're at the moment on the Ray Tracing Ultra preset 1440p, although I've turned off any DLSS. So this is uh, without any image upscaling going on at all. And we're getting about, yeah, sort of just shy of 70 FPS on the averages. So not too shabby at all. Um, although we can probably do a lot better than that. So let's start with DLSS 3 at quality mode. And see how that changes things for us a visually and b in terms of performance all right we're now running dlss 3 quality with ray reconstruction enabled as well and we're flirting with a 120 fps experience and i've got to be honest 
Can't tell a huge amount of difference visually. Not a huge amount at all between that and native. This, I would say, is a very nice place to be at 1440p if you need a little bit of help with performance, which I think if we want to run at Ray Tracing Ultra, we do. So, how is performance going to fare for us? Let's uh, flick that on now. All right, we're running DLSS 3 in performance mode. And yeah, frames are looking pretty good. We're now sort of getting 130 FPS sometimes. Not doing too badly at all. However, it feels a little bit like everything just feels a bit more prickly, if that makes sense. That's maybe a really bad way of describing it. But everything just feels like it's got a bit more of a jagged kind of look about it. It's almost like there's this filter that's been placed over my game. That's probably the best way I can describe it. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it as well as I can, because, of course, I'm A, encoding this on my PC and then uploading it to YouTube. So there's kind of like two layers of uh, compression and stuff going on there. So I don't know how well you're going to be able to uh, truly see what's going on. I mean, is it playable? Of course it is. Um, really nice effort. We're not even using frame gen. We're getting like 120 FPS on average here. I mean, albeit we're kind of getting more in the 90s to 100 here as we walk around the place. But yeah, definitely, definitely a visual step down from the quality. Okay, so there's only one thing for it. We need to switch into DLSS 4 and see what the visual quality differences are here at 1440p. I think pretty much we've concluded that performance mode here in DLSS 3 isn't ideal. Quality really is as low as you're going to want to push things. So uh, we don't actually need to mess around with the NVIDIA app like we did with Ratchet and Clank. This is because the developers of Cyberpunk have natively integrated DLSS 4 technologies into the game, whereas Ratchet and Clank hasn't. That's why we rely on the NVIDIA app to manually override it for us. It doesn't work in all games, uh, not at the moment. Like uh, I tried it with Call of Duty Black Ops 6 multiplayer, trying to override into DLSS 4, and um, wouldn't work at all in the NVIDIA app. So let's go into the options here. I'll quickly show you what you need to do. You can change between the convolutional neural network, which is the old DLSS 3 way, or the new transformer model, which is what we want to be uh, using with DLSS 4. So we're going to put ourselves back to quality. So 1440p transformer model quality ray reconstruction is on. Let's hit apply. And we are looking pretty good, I would say. We are looking pretty good. Even here at this kind of steep angle, we're looking at this kind of mesh metal grid here with the transformer model. That's looking really nice at quality. I wonder how that would change if we went to the CNN model. Let's just... Uh... That's looking pretty nice, isn't it? What happens if we go to the CNN model? So back to DLSS 3, and it just looks a little bit like it's struggling there, doesn't it? It's struggling for detail. It almost looks like it's kind of crushing the detail, but especially the further back the uh, the metal grid you go there. And it's in movement. If we sort of look at that person sat on the green stool there, that looks a little bit weird. Let's just switch back to the Transformer model. Yeah, that is so much clearer. It's almost like you can actually see through it rather than it being like a weird kind of filter effect. That's quite impressive. So the Transformer model is definitely helping with detail in motion there, for sure. It's not perfect, of course, but then this kind of thing, even in real life, if you're sort of whizzing by like a, a mesh fence like this and you sort of like look at it, it can sort of play tricks with your eyes. So, okay, so this is now running DLSS in uh, the Transformer model, so the new DLSS 4 tech, and we are now in performance. And I think it's fair to say it doesn't look quite as good as it did in quality as we sort of pan here left to right and sort of move forwards and backwards just a touch just kind of look through the mesh and try and see what's beneath there let's pop it back into quality i don't know is there much in it maybe it's just a, a general kind of effect going on here okay so when we're not obsessing over like metal mesh grids and fences uh the game looks pretty damn good this is 1440p performance I feel like that kind of filter appearance that I had prior with the old CNN model like it, in performance mode it just felt like there was this like layer over my game that just made it look a bit like yeah like not good I feel like that's gone obviously if you start pixel peeping things like metal mesh fences and running backwards and forwards side to side yeah you are going to find its limits but I, I'm struggling I'm struggling here to look around. I'm just trying to imagine that I'm playing the game rather than like obsessed. Like again, there's another like mesh link fence. I just need to double check. We are actually in performance mode. Yeah, we are. Transformer performance DLSS ray construction. I'm really struggling to find fault. 
I would liken this more to DLSS 3 quality. So it seems perhaps then that performance mode at 1440p is now on the table. I don't know. This this feels this feels good. Whereas with the old CNN AI, AI model, it felt like there was this kind of weird filter over my game. Everything just looked a bit prickly. Everything looked a bit speckledy. Everything just didn't look quite right at all. Hard to put your finger on, but it was there. And I don't know whether that was coming across to you in the video, because of course YouTube compression, etc. But this, yeah, this is very, very good. I'm going to quickly switch into quality. You tell me if you can see a difference. Just walking around again. Looking at things like that barbed wire. Just reset the averages for you for the FPS counter. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure if we... I'm sure we could find somewhere in the game where we could be like, ah, that's different there. But if you're actually just going to play the game and not become like an obsessive pixel peeper, like that looks pretty damn good, doesn't it? But equally, like, so did performance. So let's like flick it back into performance. Can you see a difference? Let me reset the averages. I don't know. Well, obviously the time of day is changing in the game, so that's going to affect things a little bit, but this looks totally playable. Totally playable. All right, let's go back to the old CNN model. Yeah, see now, especially stuff in the distance, that building there on the corner that we're kind of looking at there, that to me looks all fuzzy and blurry and it doesn't look great, particularly that skyscraper as it goes up. I can immediately start to pick fault. Um, I'm starting to wonder whether there's a bit of internal bias going on, almost like I want DLSS 4 to be good, so I'm sort of like picking up on stuff. So let's just quickly flick back to the Transformer model. Yeah, that looks way better. Immediately, to me, that looks way, way better. Very impressive stuff. Again, that whole thing we just saw with the building looking weird, that was kind of what I meant about it. It's almost like there's this like weird filter applied to the game where everything just looks a little bit weird. But as it stands here today, we've seen great results in 4K with Ratchet and Clank. We've seen very good results here today in 1440p. Yes, there is a small difference between quality and performance, but I'm not convinced it's enough to um, to say don't use performance. Obviously, it's up to you. Obviously, it's up to you, but if you're on the old CNN model, I, I would say don't use performance. But now we're on the Transformer model. Even at 1440p, I think performance is on the table. Anyway, folks, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please, please, please smash the like button, hit the sub button, ring the bell, all that YouTube stuff. Um, trying to figure out how I can reliably post quality content to this channel. Um, those of you that don't know, I'm a flight simmer, I guess, by trade. Um, got a fairly... Um, growing flight sim channel on the go at the moment which is going really really well um, however i do love my tech as well so it's definitely something that i want to be doing more of it's just in order to make videos on this tech channel that people seem to want to watch it requires me to have lots and lots of gear and of course having lots and lots of gear means spending lots and lots of money money that i don't have um, so anything software wise i can do performance comparisons on is very welcome so thanks to nvidia a for making my gpu better and also for giving me some content for today so get subbed if you're not already as i said and thanks very much indeed for watching and take the very best care of yourselves and i'll see you all in the next video cheers